Hey, this is Mikey with a quick video, and last week I talked about a new plugin I'm calling Triangulate. It's actually just a working title, and hopefully I can get some feedback on some possible new names for it here at the end of this video, but I wanted to show all the things it can do. I showed just a little bit of what it can do, but let's just take a quick tour through the plugin, what it can do. It's not yet available. I'm still working out last little last minute bugs, um, but it's pretty much a feature set, and we're hoping to release it soon, soon, soon. So let's talk about what it can do. First off, triangulate, that's what it does. It makes things into triangles. It's kind of like a mosaic effect, um, but with triangles instead of squares. So here is an example of triangulate. I did it on some, some text, a couple of text layers moving up and around, and you can see kind of the stuff it can do. Um, here's another example. This is on a still picture. picture. I just threw it. Um, onto this giraffe and I added some masks. Um, as you add masks, you can put in individual points to be able to kind of uh, change the look of it and more define what you want to be triangles and things and where and stuff like that. So that's a uh, giraffe. This is still so it's not animated. Um, and then here's, here's this. There's a built-in noise engine that um, drives the animation of the triangles. You can turn it on and off. But here is an example of kind of what it looks like Let me zoom that in 100%. Uh, moving and how the noise moves around. And this is set to, there's points in this triangulate. And I turn on just the points and none of the connecting lines or anything like that. So really kind of a cool thing it can do. Um, let's jump in and work with it. So I have some footage of just someone just talking. This is an interview. So let's go to effect. Cinema Spice Triangulate, or whatever it's called when you um, have your own copy. And what we have here, is there's Threshold, Size, Scatter, and Point Collection Mode. That's the first things we're going to have to look at. So Point Collection Mode is there's, all, there's a few different algorithms and then different channels that determines what the, um, the, where the triangles are, how big they are, how small they are, where the points are, and things like that. And then we have this Threshold. It'll determine how strict it, it adheres to that threshold and, and or to the algorithm. We also have size. It'll take the whole grid and make everything bigger or smaller. And then scatter will take what it has and kind of push the points and the triangles around and randomize it based off of that noise that you saw earlier. So let's just kind of go through some of these. You can see it kind of creates these different looks. Bring the size down, and it tries to go in and, and find points and hard edges and stuff like that. We can also go in by luminance values. You can see here in the dark, um, they're bigger triangles here in the light, really small triangles. Let's, let's bring that size up. Same thing by hue, saturation. Um, you can also go off of individual channels, RGB, and if you have any sort of alpha, you can do an alpha channel as well, or you can just have it on or off. So now that it's just on, you can see it's just a grid of triangles. And we can come in, change the size, and let's maybe scatter it. And when you scatter something, there's this scatter randomness uh, down at the bottom, and this is the, as I play through it, you can see the noise is moving around because the speed's set at 30. We can set that down to zero and it won't move. We can speed it up and it will move a lot faster. We can also change the scale of the noise that it's, it's running off of. So if you want it to be very random looking, bring it down to zero. Um, if you bring it up, it's going to look kind of more like, a, like waves. Now, uh, we can also invert the channel. Since it's just set on on, inverting it will just turn it off. Um, but if we're on, say, like red, invert it. You see how it inverts the channel of where the big triangles versus the small triangles are. We can also come in here, draw edges. And what this is doing is it's drawing all of these edges and connecting the triangles um, with the white edges. 
if I want to change the way the edges look, there's edge and point style. So I can come in, change the color, say the edge thickness, let's bring it to really small, 0.25. We can also turn on points. Bring them down. We can bring them up really large. Change the color of those as well. And we can change, you know, if we want a circle or a cross, plus a vertical bar, horizontal bar, triangle. So all these different um, options for the point itself. Now in the additional, additional vertices, um, this, there's some more options here. There's extend scatter sample. So if we click that, you can see here on these edges, um, the sample region for the, for the noise wasn't large enough. This is um, add edge points. You can see there's all these points just along the edge. I can turn those off so it's more random looking. Okay. Um, now we can also add in mask points. So say we want to add in additional points that's beyond uh, these points. Well, I'm going to turn off triangulate so I can see. Let's grab a mask tool. And how the, the mask works is it doesn't care about the mask lines. It just cares about the points. So if I come in here and let's draw some points along the jaw. You know, let's just do the full head. And I'm not really caring where I'm crossing over and I'm not going to close off this shape either. I'm just going to leave, leave it open. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is since this is a mask, I'm doing a mask track. So I'm going to right click on the mask, track the mask and just the position scale and rotation. Let's track backwards because I was right in the middle. Now I'm track forward. Okay. Now if we turn on triangulate, it's not going to do anything, but if we turn on, um, mask one, and you can see there it added, let's turn down the speed. You can see how it added that mask. It's pretty cool. Now we can also do mask only. So if we turn that on, then it's only showing the mask. And that's where this other button up here that I kind of uh, passed over, it's called composite over. And what that is, is you check that and it's going to composite what you've done over top of the original footage. So if you wanted to do something like this, or we can even come in here and take off the draw faces. And we've got this kind of a look going on. Maybe take off the draw points. We've got these red lines. Let's make those white again. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. And then what we can do is instead of just doing one mask, we can do all masks. And then what I can do now is I'm going to come in and draw another mask. Let's go around his nose. And you can see it, it already started to build that mask. And let's track that. Really kind of cool to see this in action um, and tracking it live like this. I'm going to also do, I'm going to do the bottom lip separate from the top lip, just because as he's talking, it's going to move differently. So let's track that. And then let's do the top. I want to do it on a different mask. And again, you can see I'm not closing off these masks, but it doesn't matter because I just need the points from it. Maybe we can come in and do the eyes. There's really a lot you can do. You can get as detailed as you want. Oops, I did a shape, make sure I got that selected. Here 
And so as, as many masks as you do, it's going to track them all. There's no real limit to how many masks you can put in here if you have it set to all masks. All right, let's take a look at that. Really, really cool. So this is triangulate right now. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. You know what, let's actually kind of go through and show how I did this example. Um, so what I have here is I have it just on a solid, a solid color. And I have triangulate on here. And then I've just, we'll reset it. Uh, by default on a solid, it's gonna do nothing because it's looking at color variations and things like that to put in the triangles. So if we switch it just to on, and let's take off the draw faces and put in draw points. Bring the point size down. And then let's scatter it. And because of the scatter randomness, it's going to, it's going to do this. Now let's come in and extend the range points and maybe take off the edge points. Let's come in here and change the scale. And as you change the scale, you can see how it changes the way it looks. Pretty cool. All right, so those are all of the examples. If you have any questions about what it can or can't do, um, please, please, please put them in the comments. I'd love to get to them. Um, we've got lots of ideas going forward in version 2, but um, this is pretty much feature set for version 1, and there is a lot of stuff that it can do, um, as you can imagine with all the different tracking and the masks inputs and things like that. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the name. Um, Triangulate is fine. I mean, it's really descriptive of what it does, but it's also a little bit boring. I wanted to come up with something that's uh, more of a unique name, and so I've narrowed it down to three choices. And I'd like to get some feedback. Uh, Trinity, Polyhook, and Triptych. Um, I will tell you my personal favorite is Triptych, but if it's not going to work, then I might choose something else. So let me know your thoughts on this. And um, I'd love to get your feedback on the name, also on the plugin, what you think about it. And um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.